When I was a kid, uh, we didn't have as many um, broad cultural institutions that we have now. Um, I remember mostly growing up the museum that we went to the most, and a part of it is because we were we were kids, but was the uh, Science Museum in Coconut Grove. Um, and they had this, this big uh, sloth. It was a statue of a sloth that was on US-1, and it was like, I don't know, 15 feet tall, and uh, it was it was like this dominating force in our life, you know, because everywhere we went, we saw this big sloth, you know, everywhere where we were going somewhere, we drive by it. Um, but then right next to it, you had Vizcaya, you had Matheson Hammock Park. So for for growing up for us, I think that the 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 beauty and the art was the flora and fauna of of Miami. Um, it, it was all around us it, uh, it, it, where development hadn't uh, encroached so much on, on our lives. Uh, we spent a lot of time going down to the Keys to visit my uncle who lived in Isla Mirada and Marathon first. And so I think that the, the, the art that we saw was, the, was nature, the art of nature. Um, but then slowly and slowly um, we got involved. With my, my parents became very interested in in art, um, mainly through my father's contemporary uh, business associate associates, who were um, Italian. Uh, one of his first mentors in 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 business, but also in life, was a gentleman named Dino Fabri, and Dino came from a very old Italian um, sort of a, a family of a. I don't want to call them aristocrats, but. Uh, they were a, a, uh, an art publishing house that had been around for uh, over a hundred years, Fabri P Publishing. And so he was very well versed in um, Renaissance art. And so I would say sort of Renaissance moving forward to uh, the 19th century. And so uh, we became exposed to that education at a very young age. And my father started bringing home art books um, and because my mother was a model, um, many of her friends were people in the arts. So we would go to New York and meet songwriters. I remember one of the first songwriters, and, and if he ever somehow gets to see this, I would love to reconnect with him, was a, uh, a, a songwriter named Louis St. Louis. And he wrote a bunch of songs for the, for the play and the movie Grease. So for us as kids, this was like a huge, huge deal. Um, so I, I was probably nine maybe when I met him. So I got exposed on both sides of my family, uh, on both sides, you know, my mom and my dad, through their associates to uh, living artists and uh, historic artists.